Congregation, please rise. <clears throat> we'll follow the order of services as printed in your service folder, and we'll sing together the first hymn selected by the family, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness.
our worship service this morning as we begin, begin every uh, worship service in this house of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Christine was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul affirms, in Christ Jesus you are all children of blood of God through faith, for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. The Apostle also writes all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life if we have been united with him in a death like, like his we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We have come together to seek God's comfort in our sorrow and to rejoice in the promise of the resurrection. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live, even though they die. But whoever lives by believing in me will never die. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. When Christ, who is our life, appears, and he also appeared in the Lord's glory. We pray. Lord Jesus, you wept at the grave of your friend Lazarus, and you consoled Mary and Martha in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn the loss of Christine, and dry the tears of all who weep. Calm our troubled hearts, dispel our doubts and fears. We thank you for bringing Christine to faith and giving her the gift of eternal life. Strengthen us with your word and sacraments, and keep us in the saving faith until we are united with you and all the saints, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> The first reading this morning from which we get our sermon text is from Psalm 1. The psalmist writes, by inspiration, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the advice of the wicked, who does not stand in the, uh, on the path with sinners, and who does not sit in a meeting with mockers. But his delight is in the teaching of the Lord. And on his teaching he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted beside streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and its leaves do not wither. Everything he does prospers. Not so the wicked. No, they are like the chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. Yes, the Lord approves the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The word of the Lord. We sing a psalm this morning to mark this special day, a psalm of celebration. Psalm 118, this is the day the Lord has made.
ever want to know anything about the resurrection of the body, the go-to chapter in Scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Our second reading comes from there, beginning at verse 51. Paul writes, look, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. But once this perishable body has put on immortality, perishability, and this mortal body has put on immortality, then what is written will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing verse 1 of the hymn day by day. <laughs> find in John chapter 14 where Jesus shares these uh, beautiful words about what we can expect in heaven. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will once again I will come again and take you to be with me so that you may also be where I am. You know where I'm going, and you know the way. Lord, we don't know where you are going, Thomas replied. So how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We'll, set, we'll finish singing uh, day by day. <laughs>
At this time, I customarily read the obituary of uh, Christina Cook. Christina was born in Broomfield Township, Isabella County, on December 4th, 1931, the daughter of Neil and Hattie Strong Richardson. She graduated from Remus High School with the class of 1950. Christine married Robert Stewart Cook on September 16, 1950. She helped Robert on the family farm and was a lifelong member of Zion Lutheran Church. Christine is survived by her daughter Sandra and uh, Larry and Larry uh, Cook Block, daughter-in-law Margie Brownson, the grandsons Stewart, William, and Ashley Block, Neil Jonathan Block, and uh, his friend Samantha Rapanos. Great grandson Reed Robert Block, and many nieces and nephews. Christina was preceded in death by her parents, husband, sons Stuart Neal Cook, parents in law William and Macy Cook, and siblings Mary Richardson, Roderick Richardson, Frida Waters, and Elsie Dodge. Blessed be her name. Dear fellow believers, we are not here to pay tribute to death. God tells us in his word that in Christ, death has been swallowed up in victory. Jesus destroyed death and brought life and immortality to life. And neither are, are, are we here to carry on like those who have no hope. The faithless world hasn't learned to speak the Christian language. The house of God is dedicated to preaching the good news, the good news about Jesus. And that makes every service in the house of the Lord uh, a service of victory. Whether in life or death, Christians proclaim the good news that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us and who gave himself for us. We've been taught to say with Paul, we said a few minutes ago, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're not here to ask the why and the how comes either of Christina's death, because we know that our times are in God's hands. The Christian has learned to commit their way to the hands of a loving a loving God. Christina died as she did because she lived a planned life. Planned before she was born and planned in the eternal counsel of her Heavenly Father who loved her with an everlasting love. We are here to receive comfort. Divine comfort is its a lot more than just sympathy or condolence. It's more than just saying that time will heal all wounds or maybe it was all for the best. To comfort means to strengthen, to fortify, to pray for comfort is to pray for strength to carry the burden that God has placed on our shoulders. We're comforted, not by having the burden removed. We're comforted by receiving the strength that we need to carry it. Christians are citizens of this world, and we're bound up in, in lives that have conflicts and trials and joys and sorrows. The claim that Christians are spared from the problems of this world of everyday life, that's foolishness. Nobody knows it better than a Christian. If that were true, then our churches would be full and crowded of people accepting Christianity and its protections like someone who takes out an insurance policy or wears a good luck charm. The Bible doesn't teach this, and 
And for that matter, life doesn't either. Christians have lives that are just as challenging as other people, uh, as anybody else, but they don't pray to be relieved of life's burdens. They learn to face life as it is, and they ask God to strengthen them and to comfort them, to carry it successfully. And it's not a pointless ask. God's word is like a refreshing oasis in this dry, barren world. If you look back at our, our the first, was it the first verse of our first hymn? I thought that was a, no, the second verse. Praise the one who brings cool water to the desert's burning sand. From this well comes life giving, comes living water, quenching thirst in every in every land. Consider the refreshing words of Psalm chapter 1. We're looking at verse 3. He, that is the righteous one, could be a she. Today is a she. Is like a tree planted beside streams of water which yields its fruit in season and its leaves do not wither everything she does prospers. This morning I'd like you to, you to think about Christina like a tree planted, planted in life, transplanted in death. The righteous are like a tree planted. This means that the righteous isn't some wild brush that grows up wherever it may. Out of the dry ground without any plan, any thought, any care. They're not forgotten trees that have no purpose, have no support. Going wherever the wind blows them and ending up wherever they end up by chance. It would make for a pointless life if that were true, wouldn't it? The best anyone can say to you is something like, well, do the best you can. Behind every righteous life is a master gardener who puts that tree exactly where he wants it. He fertilizes the roots and he does some pruning when it's necessary. He trims the branches. And he gives it his very best care and thought. Behind our lives is a gardener. Behind the vase, there is a potter. Behind the fabric, there is a weaver. And now, you see that? And frustrating. Makes sense. Even how do you say that in the language of the New Testament? There's a deep stream of God's grace uh, flowing from the cross of Calvary. The waters are cleansing and healing because the source there is found in the grief and the sacrifice of God's beloved son. The master gardener holds nothing back. He freely gives the life of his son so mankind can thrive next to the healing waters of that holy stream. Christina was planted by that stream. The people of God might very well get disoriented sometimes. I said, I said it before, our lives are no different than anyone else's in the sense that we go through the same sorts of things. We face the same temptations. We um, sicken from the same bugs and, and viruses and diseases. We get bruised and we get broken and we get saddened. And yes, sometimes we even cry. But we're well acquainted with the love of Jesus Christ. He lived among us. He went about healing and preaching. He gave up his life for our enemies. And what's true of the Son is also true of the Father. The Father arranges the affairs of lives, everyone. 
He's almighty. He has your back. The one who backs the universe is the one who backs you. Is he like Jesus? Is he loving and sympathetic and kind? Or is he cruel and heartless, hiding his face from his children and letting disaster after disaster overwhelm them? Planted by streams of water means that we have to know that the master gardener has the heart of Jesus. You know, that the heart that is behind the universe and the heart that broke on the cross is the heart that is behind me. And as he has called my name, I gladly go to him. It's a God we can trust. It's a God who has committed everything for us. His love compels me. That certainly was the case with Christine. Behind our lives, behind Christina's life, stands this divine, loving, gracious gardener. May we see him with the eyes of faith and be comforted. So the righteous stand like righteous tree, like like trees planted in the garden of God under the care of the master gardener, but not forever. This world is God's nursery, but the real garden is at the Father's house, you know, the place with the many mansions. There is a time for growing, a time of nurturing, but there is also a time of transplanting. How do you say that in the language of our world? We call that transplanting death. And <clears throat> it's most often painful. Roots are, are torn out from the soil by force. Worldly ties and, and close bonds are broken that hurts, that causes wounds, that uh, Take time to heal, and, and uh, the heart bleeds. But in the language of the soul, that transplanting is called life. That new planting, it's in better soil. The fruit promises to be better too. The waters are uh, offering eternal life. The climate, not like today, it's perfect. The gardener has put you in a place where you will never be out of blossom. The Bible has some, some beautiful pictures of what it means to be transplanted. Paul calls it a departure when he says, the time of my departure is at hand. And the, the best um, the way to translate that from the Greek uh, is in the phrase setting sail. Because a the picture there really refers to the launching of a ship from the dock where it has just finished being built. During the building, that ship was tied up and the carpenters and the mechanics hammered and sawed and cut and shaped the vessel and when the ship is finally done, it slides off into the water and everybody rejoices. Or how about this? Jesus calls it his exodus when he is speaking to Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration. The exodus in the Old Testament, that's what brought to end a slavery for the Israelites in Egypt. The Israelites were free to go, rejoicing on their way to the promised land. Death means no more limitations, no more slavery to the things of this world. As a tree planted here and transplanted there, why wouldn't we be happy and willing to bend to the gardener in every way? And why wouldn't this message strengthen our hearts when they get burdened, like the transplanting and the temporary loss of someone that we all love? 
Listen to the word of your God, and you will be comforted. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Let's confess our Christian faith if you do so with the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We'll sing next uh, another hymn chosen by the family, There Is a Higher Throne. <laughs>
Lord God, Heavenly Father, you are always with us, especially when our hearts are heavy with grief. Send us your spirit so that even as we grieve, we are filled with hope. You have convinced us that your son Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that our loved ones who have fallen asleep in Christ are resting in peace with you. Let nothing shake our confidence in your promise that we will be united with we will be united with you and them in glory forever, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. What great mercy you have shown us, Father, in heaven. Through your Son's resurrection, our hope is alive and our inheritance is certain. The bliss and security we will enjoy in your presence are blessings that will never perish, spoil, or fade. Shield us with your power and give us faith to trust in you in every trial until we inherit the glorious riches you are keeping for us in heaven, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we see your abiding love and kindness shown to us by family and friends. As we receive comfort and encouragement from others, we are experiencing your care. Help us bear all our burdens patiently. Be the strength of your people, now and in difficult days to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, support us all day long till the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed, and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Since the family has determined that there is no committal at the graveside, we'll uh, have the committal right now. We brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death. So that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. But we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish spoil or fade. It has pleased our Heavenly Father in his gracious wisdom to call out of this world the soul of our sister Christine Cup. We commit her remains to their final resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. May God the Father who created this body, may God the Son who by his blood redeemed this body together with the soul, may God the Holy Spirit who by holy baptism sanctified this body to be his temple, keep these remains to the day of the resurrection of all flesh. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death. By his glorious resurrection, you bestow life and immortality on all who die in him. Strengthen our faith as we move forward from this place. Console us with your comfort and renew our joy in the daily blessings of life. Help us each day to look forward to a joyful reunion in heaven where we and all your saints will uh, bask in the glory of paradise forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. And we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the God of peace, who through the power, uh, through the blood of the eternal covenant, brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, whom be, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us go in peace. Amen.